Well, folks, we are nearing completion on this project. Um, the more uh, uh, in in tuned in of you will notice I've, I'm after screwing onto this uh, stand, so uh, at least um, it's uh, high enough now to put the flywheel onto, so that's going to be the next job. Um, and then basically after we get the flywheel on, it's just a few small parts that have to go onto it, and uh, we're nearly ready to run it. So. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's uh, press on without uh, further ado and um, see how much we get done today. First of all, that's the old Gib key actually stuck in there. Let me take that out. Uh, I have a new one for it. There we go. So, put that aside. Just in case for some reason or another, the new one doesn't fit or something annoying like that. I didn't actually destroy the old one and remove it, so. That's uh, always a bonus. Now, what we need to do is we need to make sure that the keyway is nice and clean. So let's just get a file for that first of all. I'm going to just use a flat file. I have to smooth on one side. And I'm going to just Carefully run it along here and here, making sure any burrs are taken off. And there we go, that feels a bit better. So, give it a wipe, get the filings out, and picking up there so yeah you can just about see You know what, let's, uh, let's try uh, fitting the flywheel first of all and see how we get on. Get that out of the way. The flywheel is a big lump of a thing, okay? It's really heavy. I didn't weigh it, but I reckon it's about 20 kilos. much more sense to take the paint out from inside there. So I just got a little wire brush on a drill and we'll clean that out. Here we are. Clean out the keyway and the flywheel as well too. I should literally walk onto it now. So oh, 
Okay. And now we're good key goes in. So That, my friends, is going nowhere. And now we have a flywheel. So the next thing I want to do is I want to do a compression test. I couldn't do it when I didn't have the flywheel on because I just couldn't get it spinning fast enough. So let's get a compression tester out again. Compression tester does not have to be uh, stitched in with a spanner. Uh, there's o rings on it, you literally just nip them up by hand, and uh, that should be enough. And I fully expect to be able to get a good spin on this engine this time. Okay. That there. Got our crank handle. And let's give it a bit of stick. Let's make sure you guys can see what we're doing. Yeah. We're all right. Five. Still not great. Maybe it just needs to run for a while. Well, I'll do that then. Kind of disappointing, actually, to be honest with you. But I would have expected I would have been getting more than that now. Still, it's better than what I got last time, which was zero. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Not great, not terrible. I think that was the words they used in Chernobyl, wasn't it? A terrifying series, to be honest with you. I find it fascinating from, just from an engineering standpoint, if nothing else. Well worth a watch if you haven't seen it already. Um, one of the greatest human error stories ever told, I would say. And it's from that perspective alone, but I find it scary, you know? No matter what I do in my job, I could never kill the amount of people that were killed in that accident. Um, anyway, right, I think uh, I think now that we have the flywheel on, it's time to put some small bits on. So I think the next thing to go on to it is going to be the uh, magneto. And now what we'll do is we'll set our timing. Now, um, uh, you'll notice I've... Uh, I polished the outside of the flywheel here. Um, I'm, I'm going to go, go over it with a sanding block again to get that to shine back and get any of the excess paint off. But I'll do that with the engine spinning. Um, but uh, what I did do before I uh, before I did that was I put a um, I put a center punch mark on the outside rim of the flywheel. So that when I did actually get that machined, I would still know which top dead center is. Now it is incidentally top dead center is actually opposite from the gib key, so it's over there. So. That should be roughly top dead centre there. And you'll notice the centre punch mark is there. So that's uh so that so I was right. Now just noticing those valves are tight. So maybe that's why we're not getting enough compression. Let's see.
Okay. Uh, I did adjust the valves, but for some reason they've tightened up. So maybe uh, what I'll do is I'll slacken them off a little bit and see if we get better compression that way. So uh, we're saying six tau, so I have a six tau feeler blade here, the screwdriver, and I think it was a five eight spanner. We'll crack it off with the socket anyway. Okay, let's show the compression tester on now. I literally just slacked off the valves, but we'll adjust them now in a minute. Just want to make sure that that's not what's causing our low compression. It is a low compression engine, by the way, so uh, I don't expect to be getting massive figures anyway. The compression ratio is only five to one of these at the best. the same compression I was getting before but anyway look at compression is compression it was running before I took it apart so badly now but it was running all the same so let's get those valves properly adjusted now They all say you're better off just being ever so slightly too loose on the valve rather than too tight. That's just uh, because if they're too tight, they never seat fully and they never cool properly then. Whereas if they're too loose, they just make noise. And uh, the engine will be a little bit inefficient. But uh, I think I'd rather have an inefficient engine than have one with burning valves. Okay, now they're adjusted. So, the back a bit. Let's get our magnesia water. As I said in the previous video, the man who did the coil for me uh, for the Magneto. His name is Martin Percy. You can find him on Facebook. He does very, very good work, I have to say, and I was very pleased with, uh, with the uh, end result. I mean, the, the new coil looks absolutely fantastic, and it gives a nice bright spark. Um, so, uh, it's, uh, it should yield good results. Okay. Now, all we're going to do is going to put it in loosely, because we have to set the chain tension as well, too.
You might remember that one bolt I had to put in before I put the governor mechanism together. That's the one I'm doing up here now. one bolt in there now at the moment so I have a couple of shims to put in so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start to put the two in let's see how they go from there turn around so you can see two shims I blasted them so they're nice and clean and three holes and there's only three holes to go into the mag so I'm going to go like this, so that one there loops into the bolt that I've already put in and then this one here will go into the far side, so So let's, uh, let's get our chain on. Yeah, put the chain on, put the chain on. So the chain is nice and clean. Ish. Clean it off, let's say. And make a bit of space for ourselves here. The workshop has descended into chaos over the course of this project. So, the engine's gonna turn that way, so we want to have the link facing down on the inside. The, the little, uh, the, the retainer for the chain. You want to make sure it faces away from the the direction of rotation and um, so that it doesn't come off. Probably less important on a, you know, it's only doing a 350 RPM, uh, but the uh, on a on a motorbike it's vitally important, apparently. I don't, I'm not into motorbikes really, but I've heard that now. So, you'll see there, the, the bottom sprocket is free to rotate, so that's uh, that's to allow me to put the chain on it to set the time. So to me that the chain is way too loose, so we can probably put that other shim in. I only have three shims, so <laughs> I'm gonna have to make do with what we have. I have to find the third one now. Okay, so here's a nicely cleaned up shim. So it goes like this.
trying to get the shims into place here. Okay. That's about right actually for the chain tension, I think. Um, to be honest, it's good enough for me anyway. So let's uh, let's bolt the magneto down fully now. There we go, that's turning over nicely there now. We'll put the we'll put the link back in now in a minute. shape like the thing that goes over two pins on the chain to keep it on and then this so let's make sure we have the right directional rotation yeah and okay Oh, that's the chain on. Now obviously, uh, at this point in time, the magneto is turning independently of the engine, so uh, that allows me to set the timing. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it uh, 20 degrees before top dead center. So, ballpark, you know, I mean, I don't actually have a 20 degree before top dead center mark on the flywheel. I didn't have one before I even started this job, uh, before I blasted the paint off it, so I was at a loss already. So. So you can see now because of the fact that it's the top dead center but the two uh, rockers are moving that's the, the top dead center at the end of the exhaust stroke and the beginning of the inlet stroke so we want the next uh, we want the top of the compression stroke so we'll spin it around 360 degrees and you turn it and you find it both the valves are slack and we are at top dead center now so the engine turns this way okay so uh, clockwise so we want to go 20 degrees before top dead center will be about there I suppose years makes no bloody difference anyway okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to turn the Do this a different way. We'll have to take the cover off the points and we'll have to do it with a, a, a meter. And basically, what we do is um, we set it so that uh, uh, you uh, the moment the points open is the time the magnet is going to fire. So let's get our uh, meter. So we're in about the right position there now, okay? I am actually getting, I'm actually getting a spark from the mag. So what we'll do is, we'll just turn it until the points just start to open. We'll go with that. About there. So we're, getting a, so we're getting a spark. Um, let's put our spark plug in. I think I might just give it a clean, because the last time this was used was when the engine was in bits.
I got the nice little brass uh, brass knurled screw for the uh, spark plug there as well too, just to keep it looking authentic. So, spark sorted, timing is done. Uh, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put that cover plate on the side and I'm going to put a um, I'm going to put the cover plate on and I am going to put the uh, put some engine oil in it. To be honest with you, I have a funny feeling we're going to be starting this soon. Uh, I mentioned in the previous video that uh, I didn't have a um, that the the drain tap wouldn't stay upright when it was fully tight. So what I did was I actually put uh, what I did was I put an O ring on the bottom of it, and um, it seems to do the job. It's not great, but it's uh, it's it's okay. It'll do the trick. Um, so where is that cover plate gone? Putting your gloves on when your hands are dirty is the uh, mechanics equivalent of uh, closing the stable door after the horse is bolted, but those will stop from getting any more dirty. Kind of forgot I'd taken them off. NW40 semi synthetic, it'll do fine. Pop that back on. And spin it over a couple of times by hand. Carburetor and governor on. Put the carburetor on first. So I have a new gasket, of course. And a new bolts for it as well. So okay. The copper grease in the bolts. Again, as per usual on this engine, there's not a washer in sight. The bolts are too long. These are the ones that are recommended for this particular purpose. So, uh, anyway, it's not a problem. I'll just use different ones. I have the old ones from it. Okay. So there's the carburetor on. The funny thing is, if I were to pour petrol into the float bowl, 
and uh, crank it over. It will probably start at this point in time, but I'm not going to jump the gun. Let's have a bit of patience on this. Next, we're going to put on our exhaust. So, clean up that flange, first of all. Actually, do you know what? No. Next, let's, let's put on a governor mechanism. This uh, governor rod I picked up has, um, it's the wrong bloody one. Uh, this was obviously off a different type of engine. So you'll see that there's a pin going through here. A pin should be going through here and this should be on this end. Oh, it's going to be a pain to change, that is. Okay, well, we'll yeah, have to strip the paint off first of all. So let's, uh, let's do that. You know what, no. Let's try and start the engine. First of all, let's put the exhaust on. I'll take that back off the paint at a later stage. It'll be alright for the moment, but it's just to get a a bit of silencing going on if we're going to start this. Okay. Copy these out of the way, and all these out of the way as well. Petrol into the float bowl next. Okay. Like that. Okay, let's do this. We have a spark on, right? Hopefully the timing is a bit better now. Bit of trial and error involved here, I think. So I'll have to do some measurements to actually get the timing 100%. Come on. That's it. Oh, that's closer.
Hey, hey, she's running. Probably flooding it a little bit there. Let's try that again. Right, so half a turn. Okay. So it should start easier now because it's a bit warm. I think we're getting there folks. Next is to um, fit the rest of the bits, set up the governor, um, set the timing properly because it's backfiring like mad. You can feel it coming back through the carburetor and um, clean it all up and do the final detailing on it. But it's pretty much there now. I mean, it's running. So uh, I can't say it's running especially better than it was before. I mean, but it's definitely quieter anyway. And I think by the time I set the timing up, it should sit there happily doing its thing for hours on end without causing a problem. So, uh, yeah, exciting times. I enjoyed that now. Uh, a bit of fun. So, um, I think I'll call it that. So, uh, yeah, next is to sort out that governor rod, which is a bit of a pain. I have to find the other piece of it as well. I don't know where it's gone. And... Uh, yeah, um, we'll be pretty much uh, pretty much sorted then. Um, there is a, uh, as I said, there's still a bit to do, but not a huge amount now. I mean, all of the main bits are done. Um, that new uh, magneto is working brilliantly. Um, but uh, you can see that uh, me trying to keep it running um, uh, properly, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit tricky, you know, because I'm obviously trying to regulate the airflow and uh, the mixture and all of that as well too where obviously i shouldn't need to have it i shouldn't need to do that um so when i have the timing set properly and that as well too it'll it'll make a big difference um i'll try and find some uh, measurements in that and see where the timing mark should actually be but it certainly can't be far off that that point um so yeah um happy days right anyway sure look at thanks for watching again and um We'll uh, pick this up again in another video. In the meantime, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.